Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I, my partner, uh, have a <laughs> fabulous, fabulous interview today uh, with somebody we've known uh, for a long time who's uh, near and dear to our heart. And uh, John, why don't you uh, tease a little bit about who we're going to speak with? Okay, Art, I will. Um, so Art and I, I have known Tim and Linda Keenan for probably 20 years or more. Um, and we worked with them many, many times because they ran, I say past tense, and that's why we're talking to them. They ran a, a wonderful little audio uh, studio in Cyprus. And so uh, over the years, we've done voiceover recordings with them. They've done books on tape. They do uh, uh, post-production for television shows, adding sound effects and music. They have a wonderful business, and they finally decided to retire. And I'm shocked uh, because I didn't think they were old enough to retire. But um, we, Art and I agreed that these two folks have a wonderful story to tell. And I think it'll be instructive for anybody who runs a business and wants to retire. So let's meet Tim and Linda Keenan. Hi, Tim. Hi, Linda. Hello. Hey, Art and John. Looking yeah. forward to it. And by the way, uh, John, you before, be, before you uh, uh, go a little further, lead in, and one of the other reasons why we know uh, Tim and Linda so well is that they are the consummate uh, volunteers and helpers. Uh, if you need a hand with something, they've always been there. Yeah. We've served on several uh, uh, industry boards together, uh, which is how I first uh, met both John and the Tim probably 15 or 20 years ago. And uh, they've just been a delight to know uh, all, all this time. Two of the really, really nice people in this industry. Well, thank you. You're too kind. You know, I, I do have to say that the volunteering part of it, you know, that was, uh, it started out, well, I thought this would be good for business, but it was actually good for all those things. Good for business, but good for making friends and good for, you know, making lifelong friends. And we've made some yeah. great connections over the years. And it's when you work side by side with people, you realize how effective those groups are. From, from a networking standpoint and from a business standpoint, and from a getting to know you standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Linda, I mentioned that I've known you guys for about 20 years, probably longer, but you've been in business for closer to 40 years. Tell me about that. No, oh, it's been a long time. We were real young when we took over the business that Tim was working with, and um, he ran it by himself for a couple of years. I was an x-ray tech in a hospital, and he decided he needed more help. And so we could take my salary and pay somebody, or um, I could come work with him. And so that's what we decided to do. And, and actually, it worked out really well, because one of, the, one of the cool things about having a family business is there's nobody who's as invested in the business as family. Yeah. And uh, we put Linda in charge of the business side of it and talking to clients and, and scheduling and making sure people got paid and making yeah. sure we got paid. And uh, she did a fantastic job and didn't realize what a great marketing person that she was, you know. Really. <laughs> yeah. and, and you could, knowing you were had somebody you could trust out front um, at running the book, running the business in that sense, be greeting people and uh, yeah. taking care of clients, uh, you could concentrate on the technology on the audio on the recording and you had two studios which were very nice studios they, yes but i have the question for you is after 40 years it must have been difficult to what do you call it pull the pull the plug or yeah. decide to retire because you didn't just have to retire you had to sell the business Right. Yeah, and right. take care and take care of your customers because you have been active. It's like uh, here you are and you're busy, 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 and then the next day you you're retired. So uh, right. Right. how yeah. tell us a little bit about that? that. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely took some time. Uh, you know, uh, you don't think about it until you get into your late 50s and 60s and you go wow what are we going to do here i will say all along we had employees we had great employees some who've gone on to do some really wonderful things uh, 
teach full time and share, you know, all of our expertise with students. And uh, one of them still working at Chapman University full time as a professor, and uh, he loves it there. It's a big career change for him. But yes, you know, we tried to mentor somebody within the organization to take over the business before we went and tried to, you know, market the business on the outside. But uh, we, we were working on plan B's and plan C's and what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, uh, you know, obviously it would have been great if we could have sold the business, the name and, uh, all, you know, the clients all as one big package, but it just didn't work out for us. So, uh, and, and I think the other issue was COVID, kind of COVID threw a monkey wrench into everybody's plans for whatever it was they were planning, you know? Yeah. So for us, COVID was the beginning of a semi-retirement kind of thing. And now it's like, let's get our end game uh, working. And, uh, and it actually worked out really well because during COVID, we connected with all our clients and all our talents electronically for the most part at the beginning. You know, I mean, we were all on, uh, you know, quarantine. And so for Linda and I, it worked out fine. We quarantined at home and we quarantined at work. And it was good to have some place to get up, get in the car and drive over to the office and uh, and do our thing. And really very little interruption. Uh, yes. You know, did we did business dip during COVID? Yes. And uh so, I mean, that sort of said, you know, uh, our lease is coming up and this is, you know, COVID has hit other things, uh, you know, uh, laws that were passed recently, uh, AB5 in California, that makes it very hard to hire freelance people. Uh, all those things sort of culminated into our decision to uh, when the lease is up, we need to pull the plug. And so we worked towards that target date and, uh, you know, things worked out. It worked out so, well. I'm sorry, you were going to say, Linda? I just said it worked out really well. It worked out actually better than we thought it was going to work out as far as shuffling the clients or shifting the clients, I should say, to um, another friend of ours in, in Michigan that Tim will talk about. But, well, I'll say just okay. we're so glad that we're able to find a home for a lot of our corporate clients because, again, working electronically, he's able to work electronically, hook in clients via Zoom. Uh, and then talent via the technology that allows you to connect to people's home studios. We've had that technology for, you know, I would say 15 years, mm -hmm. being able to connect to home studios, you know, a lot of voice talent built home studios. But COVID put that, you know, uh, accelerated that dramatically to everybody realized I have to step up my game and I have to have a decent quality home studio from, right. from a voice talent or an actor standpoint. Yeah. Also, so, another uh, interesting point is that um, because of COVID, you were actually able to, since you weren't able to actually sell the physical business so the clients could keep coming in, uh, you had to adapt over the last two years, which made it kind of easy for somebody to deal with somebody in the Midwest as easily as they were dealing with you. And so you had already made that transition and probably increased the value of the business uh, in ways that you hadn't even imagined uh, when yeah. you first started playing around with that. Totally. That's yeah, true. totally. I mean, sure, it would have been cool to, as I said, sell the whole thing, but uh, doing it this way worked out great. The guy's name is Anthony Gedig, his company's Third Hour Media. And uh, we still have our creative media recording website because I'm doing a little bit of consulting in my retirement, which I think mm -hmm. we'll talk about. But if you go to creative media recording, you'll see links to Anthony's stuff. We're sharing a Twitter feed now as part of our transition. Uh, and uh, it's uh, soundtrack underscore pro on Twitter. And uh, and it's it's a good way to introduce people to the both of us, I think. And uh, we started this, you know, we we started planning this months before we retired, and so we got to, you know, we talked to our clients. Anthony flew to California and actually worked with us for a week, looking at our okay. practices and that type of thing. Met some clients face to face, mm -hmm. and all that really helped with the transition. We'll make yeah. sure to put the, those <laughs> links in the description under the video, so uh, people wanted to. Uh, 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 follow you uh, with the, the new stuff that you're doing or uh, continue to get uh, excellent services, they can do that. Uh, well, one last thing, since you didn't uh, sell the business, why don't you do all your gear? That, I was just going to talk about that. Yeah, go ahead, Linda. <laughs> well, I kept telling him to put it in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> but he, uh, he got connected with an auction company and they came down and picked it all up. And before that, we had hired a few guys to take it all apart, helped him, you know, get it all organized, get all the it. manuals. He put the manuals with every single piece of equipment. Uh, we had all the serial numbers. We, we were really pretty organized about that. And the auction company came, picked it up, and they've already sold all of it. Almost all and, of it, yeah. And, yeah, wow. we, 
we're real, really very pleased because, with how that worked. Yeah, right, that and process. So I kept yeah. saying, um, "I'm sorry, I told you to put it on the toaster." Yeah, she was surprised <laughs> by uh, pieces that I'd actually held on to, like tape recorders. Oh yeah, my gosh. there's this huge resurgence in analog mm -hmm. tape recorders, and uh, I had a analog uh, spring reverb unit, and it was a box. It was about uh, five feet tall and uh, two and a half by two and a half, and actually that. Uh, because it was vintage, because yeah. we're all in the, the vintage thing. mode, it actually went for a lot of money. And the tape recorders, the vintage tape recorders, went for a lot of money. So yeah. uh, more than we get them. Yeah. And all the stuff that I thought that he should have gotten rid of years ago, it's a good thing he hung on to it. Because, because now it's vintage. Now it's really, it's vintage, and it's worth a lot more money than it, it would have been even 10 years ago. Sure. So um, he did good. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you one thing that didn't sell were beta tape recorders. <laughs> Not beta like full beta, but beta max for, or beta oh. professional, beta SP. Yeah. Because they weren't sort of the super high ends, uh, nobody wanted those. So no demand for beta SP, which I would have thought, you know, from an archival standpoint. Well, you know what? I could use one, right? Seriously. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, a friend of mine took called. one. No, a friend of mine took one and was transferring a bunch of stuff. And if he's done with it, when he's done with it, I'll let you know. Okay, good. Thank you. So I think for our audience, which is, you know, the over 50 crowd, which means that people might be considering uh, retiring or they may already be retired or who knows, they might be way past retirement. Um, you, I think have an interesting story because you planned for this very well. And when you knew your lease was up, whatever that time period was, a couple of years, I imagine, you were kind of ready to go. That's true. And it, I, you know that comes from the financial planning standpoint. We were so lucky to get connected with somebody when we were in our 40s. Yeah. And uh, that allowed us to sit down and realize, you know what, we need to start we need to be the masters of our retirement because uh, when you're self-employed, there's no pension. There's no, you know, sure, we're going to get Social Security because we're paying into Social Security. We're paying double into Social yeah. Security as self-employed. But uh, help me out here. Oh, yeah. Well, so we had a friend who, who said, oh, you should meet with my cousin. And he's a financial guy. And we're like, oh, my gosh. But how do you say no? So we went ahead and met with him. And then it's the best thing that we ever did. Yeah. He, he, we, immediately we knew we needed help because we were just doing our little IRAs and SEP IRAs. And he really got us on a nice path to retirement and, yeah. and then working with our, um, our uh, accountant right. over the years too. You right. know? So it, it was good. And I, I tell every niece, nephew, any young person I come across. Start early. Even if you have a pension, you don't know if that's going to be there. Right. Just start planning now, even on a small scale, just, Plan. Yeah, you have to be the master of your yeah. future. And, you know, that's so, you know, we, we, you know, built up the resources and, you know, could have retired a while ago, but thought that, you know what, then COVID hit and it's like, well, what are we going to do? We retire and then what? You can't really travel. There's really not a whole lot to do. So we, and our lease wasn't quite up yet. So we just kept going and it actually worked out best for us, you know. So we sort of gradually, I'd say the last couple of years, last year in particular, we kind of took, started taking Fridays off and, start to move into semi-retirement and when we uh, could. yeah <laughs> and then closed uh, so we closed at the end of the year from taking care of clients and then we had that six weeks five or six weeks to uh wrap up the physical space because you know we built two studios from the ground up in this new sure. facility and had a lot of like we said had a lot of equipment had a lot of physical stuff and had to figure out homes for all that many trips to goodwill as well and to, gave a lot of things to friends, friends. And Clients and office chairs. And voiceover. Yeah. yeah, like, wouldn't you like this lovely office chair? <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't you love this what lovely painting? I think uh, our paintings are spread around in about four or five different peoples that we had. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so you you are um, uh, not really the retiring kind, and uh, and I say that in the sense that uh, even when you were running a business, and that just took huge amounts of energy and, and everything you had, you still found time for. Uh, uh, helping other people, chamber of commerce. You were in politics uh, for a while, uh, Tim. Uh, you're yes. Not, you, you, you weren't just the the, the guy who uh, went in and out of the the drugstore and the uh, the hmm. supermarket uh, to and from work. 
you were very involved in your community and, probably, and still are to this I know, I know with the Commerce Chamber of Commerce. So what are the kind of things that you're going to be doing, both maybe financially, you were talking about consulting and uh, uh, public service uh, now that you are retired? Well, I've, you know, I've been on the Chamber of Commerce board for about 15 years uh, and moved into an executive position. It was kind of a thing that, you know, when I was on the city council, I realized the interaction between a Chamber of Commerce, which is basically a club or organization of businesses, and government. And uh, they can do a lot of things together. And so uh, that's kind of what I've tried to do being involved in the Chamber of Commerce is, is try to merge uh, government and the chamber so that we can there's things that a chamber can do that a government can't do. And so that it's worked out really well. And I'm going to stay around for another year, probably. And Linda has been involved in the Women's Club of Cyprus. She just recently got her 25-year pin. And uh, I know she's going to stay involved in uh, some of the Women's Club activities. What, what does the Women's Club do? Oh, a lot some of, of the things. things. That you did. We, we raise money for a lot of uh, nonprofits, many, many, many different nonprofits, veterans, uh, Precious Life Shelter. I mean, I just... There's so many, but um, and so I've always enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. So, so we plan to stay around, but we really, we, we really like to pull the plug, and we'd like to do some traveling, and we'd like mm -hmm. to enjoy some downtime. Yeah. You know. Well, well you certainly you. are the uh, poster children for <laughs> celebrating Act Two. Uh, very active Act One, many Act, several Act Ones, and now <laughs> that you are moving to this other phase where you're not fully active in business all the time, although you'll be doing some consulting and. And you and Linda will be doing uh, your uh, public service work continuing as well. But this is this is the path that many of our audience, the ones that we're really beaming ourselves toward, which is having longer, healthier lives to live beyond retirement. Unlike our folks and, and grandparents, who oftentimes they they worked till they were old, like 70, 65. And uh, then they, they didn't last that long after that. So there are a lot more opportunities because of uh, advances in healthcare and things like that. So uh, anybody out in the world who is 50 or wants to turn 50 someday, okay, hmm. watch this episode over and over and over again because this is the way to, this is a very good way to do it. Well, thank you. You know, uh, we, we, uh, we're lucky, we're fortunate, we have good health. Uh, we come from families uh, that had, you know, that lived for a long time. Linda's grandfather lived to be 100 years old. Wow. And, uh, you know, so we there's longevity in both our families. And uh, so we're hoping, you know, knock wood, that we're going to stay healthy and uh, be able to do some traveling and get together with people. And uh, as we move back into normalcy uh, post-COVID, uh, there you go. Okay, well, well that, that sounds like money or uh, coming in, uh, coming in. We did transfer our phone line to uh, our home, so from the office for a few months. And they just keep calling. I love right. it. <laughs> well, Tim and Linda, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Um, as Art said, it's a lesson there for all of us. And I, uh, I know we're going to see you again soon. Stay busy, stay healthy. Thank, thank you. you. It's great talking to you guys. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.